G'day everyone and welcome to my art channel Brushes with Beck. Today's video is a little bit different to normal. Instead of doing an art piece, I'm doing some colour swatching, which I've done before, but rather than swatching out a set of colour pencils, I am sorting through and reorganising all of my sets of colour pencils and swatching them out differently to how I've previously done. Now, normally, I keep my colour pencils in their relevant sets. I have a colour chart for each set of colour pencils that I have, and I use those colour charts to choose my colours when I'm doing pieces and work from those. The only problem with this is that with many colour pencil sets, not all of the colours in those sets are light fast, which means the colours may fade after five or 25 years instead of being uh, truly light fast, which is considered 100 plus years under mu museum conditions. So what I've done for this video is I've gotten out my Colorsoft set of 72, my Polychromos 120 set, and my Derma Drawing Pencils, my few Derma Light Fast and Caran d'Ache Luminance. Now the advantage I have here is that all of my Derma Drawing Pencils, my Derma Light Fast and the Caran d'Ache Luminance are already 100% light fast. So I didn't have to sort through those at all. However, with the Colorsoft in particular and the Faber-Castell Polychromos, I had to go through each of those sets and I removed all of the non-light fast pencils. So for the uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos, that meant removing any pencil that wasn't a three star pencil based on their light fast ratings of one, two or three. For the Derwent Colorsoft pencils, they use the blue wool scale of light fastness, which ranges from one to eight, with eight being the highest light fast rating. And they class anything as a six or above as being light fast for 100 plus years. So that's what I kept in that set. Overall, I lost about 18 pencils from the Polychromos and about 20 or so from the Colorsoft. And that's a much smaller set, 72 compared to 120. So there's quite a bit of difference in the standard of um, light fast pencils in each set. Now the difficult part was then putting all of those pencils into a color order. So rather than keeping my sets separate, I then picked out all the yellows from all the sets and tried to put them in order, picked out all the reds from all the sets and so on and so forth. And it was a really extensive process. The pinks, were probably the easiest, the pinks and the purples, because as with most sets, they are usually the least light fast of any of the colors because the pigments aren't as stable as um, many of the other pigments. So you'll find that if there's gonna be any colors that aren't light fast in a set, commonly it's in that pink and purple range. So that was probably the, the biggest loss out of all of my colors, but I don't really use a lot of pinks and there were still quite a few remaining um, that will be very, very versatile and I shouldn't have any problems with the losses of those pinks. Now, if you want to get a better idea of any one of these sets, I have done unboxings and color swatching videos for each of these sets individually. I will link them up in the cards above and probably also down in the description box below so you can check those out. I've got one for the Faber-Castell Polychromos 120, the Derma Drawing set, and also the color soft set. That one was not last week, the week before, I believe. I was also going to go through my uh, Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura, the watercolor pencils, but this actually took me all day to do. By the time I had gotten everything set up, picked all the colors out, put them in order, swatched them all, this was a whole day affair. So I didn't actually get time for the watercolor pencils. And as it turns out, with all my different pencil sets, my watercolor pencils won't fit in my storage drawers anyway. So as I said, the pinks were the biggest reduction in colors for this. And I just had to move on through those different color ranges and try to organize them. It was actually really, really difficult, especially in the range of the browns. I found that to be quite challenging because there's some sort of gray browns, some yellow browns, red browns, some slightly green browns. It's like, oh, do I put those with the reds? Do I put those with the greens? Do I keep them in the brown range? So there's a lot to think about really how you want your pencils organized. And all of that is really personal preference. As I got sort of 
more into the Browns and more and more confused by them, I decided that it probably didn't matter too much about the particular order, even though it is really nice to have them in that perfect order. I realized A, it was never going to happen, and B, they were probably going to get mixed up in order in the drawers anyway, and I wouldn't be able to maintain that very easily. So the drawers don't need to be a set specific order, but with my color swatches and keeping them in the in the correct drawer at least, I can have easier access to a particular range of colors from all my sets in one place. And it makes it easier to, you know, select those colors. So the point of this is when you have, I found with my color swatch charts from individual pencil sets, they are a fantastic reference, but it's hard to compare a color swatch that might be a color that might be in the middle of that color swatch sheet to another color that might be in the middle of another color swatch sheet. So the point of this was to be able to compare those colors from the sets more easily and then also to have color swatches that were um, had an exposed edge for each color so it made them more easily to compare to one another and also to a color from my reference photo either on my uh, computer screen or on a printout in front of me or something in real life. So that's the main concept for this and the main reason I wanted to uh, put everything together. Um, it's not hard to put them back into their sets if I need to, that's not a problem, but this also prevents me from you accidentally using non-light fast colors when I may not want to. I don't want to be using colors that aren't going to last if I intend on keeping a piece for a very long time or even selling it. So that's another motivation for this is I want to make sure I'm using only really high quality materials and the other colors that I'm uh, that I've put aside because they're not light fast I can just use those for sketching and doodling and for you know quick quick pictures that uh, I don't intend to do anything with so to speak if I'm there's nothing wrong with using non light fast colors if you are making and selling prints of that artwork but if you intend to sell the original artwork and it's going to be kept for a very long time it's really not recommended to use those non light fast colors And I just want to take a quick moment to ask you to please give this video a thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Now, as you can see, I have started on the color swatches. You can see I've got that. This one's at the bottom of the page. So I've got that bottom edge um, of color along the edge of the paper, and then I'll cut them, the uh, top row of colors off there so that the color is along that edge as well. So there's 20 colors on each swatch sheet. And I've labeled them with the color name and also um, the brand so that it's easier for me to pick that color out of the box rather than going oh the color is this name but which brand is it which pencil am I looking for it's much easier if I have that brand name written down as well so this part of the process took even longer than uh, actually organizing the colors and simply because creating the swatch charts and then coloring them all in just it's just a really time-consuming process and my hand was getting quite sore because I'd swatched out uh, you know over 140 colors and that's after I'd been uh, coloring with them to test the pencils to be able to put them in, in color order as well so really big process and like I said it took me all day but it was worthwhile to be able to have these easy reference charts uh, for myself and to be able to then select colors more accurately based on color and not just based on brand. And if I want to use a particular brand, I can more easily compare uh, colors from that brand to colors of other brands that I may like. So it was really quite an in-depth process for me, like I said, and the thing about this is now that I've done this is I may not actually like it in practice. So I haven't actually used this setup yet to choose colors for a piece and then work on a piece from so it's going to take me a little bit of time to get used to probably and i'm just going to have to see if i like it there's a good possibility i'm not going to like it at first because i have always used my pencils 
from their set, you know, arranged in their proper colour order in the case. <laughs> and that's just how I've always done it from when I was a teenager. And to have them all muddled up, not in their proper order, so to speak, is sort of different for me. So, But I think it will be good because it will allow me to break out from that mould and actually use more of my colours because I'm actually seeing the colours as opposed to seeing a brand or seeing um, a particular pencil in a set. On through the blues here you can see there's a really nice uh, variety of blues there and that's sort of the blues and the browns and probably the reds really didn't suffer at all from this uh, pencil selection and culling out non-light fast pencils. There's a couple of more bright turquoisey greeny blues that didn't make the cut and almost all browns are light fast. A lot of those pigments are very very long lasting, no problems there. Like I said it's really those pinks and purples and if you are after a set of colour pencils that is has a strong pink and purple representation I really do recommend that you go with a 100% light fast set such as the Derwent Light Fast or the Caran Dash Luminance or something like that. Don't go with your Derwent Colour Soft which has a lot of pinks that aren't light fast or even a reasonable number of the Polychromos that I pulled out were pinks as well. So it's just really something to keep in mind when you are choosing a pencil set is not just the feel uh, of the pencils and is in a preference from wax to oil based pencil but also keep in mind what it is that you most commonly draw, what your subject matter is if you're drawing a lot of flowers, a set with um, non-light fast pinks and purples is probably not a good set for you but um, as someone like me who doesn't draw a lot of flowers a set like that is probably not a problem at all with the wildlife work that I do I don't often need a lot of pinks or purples. Now after I swatched out all these greens I'm not sure what happened when I was doing my colour organisation but I went from this earth green to this uh, magenta or matter I think it was and I had a moment where I wasn't sure how I ended up that way whether I'd just given up in my color selection process or I'd been sorting out my greens and then pulled out my um, pinky reds to uh, organize and then something got lost in translation and I just ended up with earth green to magenta but like I said Ultimately it doesn't really matter, but I was very confused when I did that colour swatch of earth green and then the magenta right next to it. I thought I'd put them in the cases in the wrong order and I hadn't, it's simply just I must have messed up when I was doing my initial organisation. Like I said it's okay, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to flow on from one colour to the next, I just wanted to be able to do it that way. So another sheet of brown pencils which started on the previous sheet. There are so many options for browns and that is fantastic. Yellowy browns, red browns, grey browns, you name it the option is there if you need it. So that's why I found these browns so hard to organize. As you can see I put sort of more of a reddish brown tone there in amongst the yellow browns. It kind of annoyed me a little bit but what can you do? <laughs> and then it was really just a matter of you know what I would find most useful being next to each other and being able to compare to each other. So it's not perfect like I said it became very difficult to organize by the end. I was sort of getting a little bit frustrated with how much I was going back and forth between the different browns going what's supposed to be going next and it was very easy to lose my place but I'm very pleased with the end result of all the color charts and how that has turned out. And like I said, just going through more and more browns, there's just a lot of options there. If you are curious at all, the paper that I'm using for my colour swatch sheets, uh, it's nothing special, it's just a fairly cheap, smooth Bristol paper. I wanted something smooth so the pencil would go down nice and smoothly. So it's a bright white versus a 
um, natural white paper. And I'd almost completed all my swatch sheets by this point when we had a cat intermission, <laughs> cat admiration hour. And so I had a bit of trouble getting my last um, color swatch chart done there, but ultimately in the end it all worked out. She's an absolute sweetheart though, and she just she just loves attention. And if you like she's not a very has to be next to you all the time cat, but when she wants attention, she wants attention. So that's what she's doing right here in my video. <laughs> it's no you've just gotta let her have her moment and then she'll move on when she's ready. But she is such a sweetheart. So through the grey range there, I started with the warm greys before moving on to the cool greys and there's not a lot left in my last pencil drawer before um, heading into the blacks of the different pencil ranges. So these drawers that I'm actually using um, were made for me uh, by a family member which is a very nice um, Christmas gift, not this recent Christmas, the one before I'm ashamed to say because I haven't used them until today. I um, I was supposed to actually finish sanding them back and painting them whatever colour I wanted or staining them and I had every intention of doing that and I started sanding them and then I never finished sanding them and so they've never been stained or painted and so I still hadn't used them and I was like you know what I'm just gonna start using them and when I'm ready to stain them or paint them then I'll pull my pencils out and do that but I thought there's no point in not using them having them sitting there when they were just perfectly made for this purpose. So yeah, you can see all my colour swatch charts there, how the colours are on all of the edges makes them really easy to use. And there's my pencils organised in their beautiful five drawer case. So thank you very much for watching this video. I know it's a bit of a long rambly one, but I do hope you enjoyed it anyway. Like I said, if you want to see the unboxings and swatchings of specific brands, I have links to all of those videos in the description box below and up in the cards above as well. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a comment down below, subscribe to my channel, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you again next week for another one. Stay creative!